that. Oh, hi. <laughs> hello, hello. Hi. Welcome to the Zoom. I want to introduce my colleague Beth uh, from the we're from the library. So I know I think I've seen you at previous um, meetings when we used to be able to meet in person at the Poetry Center. Um, but I wanted to bring the library literary arts department into our conversation. So they're, they're going to be here to listen and learn. Right. Let me get my camera on. Thank, I, thank um, you. Yeah, we're hoping and if possible to support writers doing presentations virtually who knows what the possibilities are so yeah that would be great we we are funding uh, events like that um, writers giving workshops um, for the library but virtually yes that's what we're so we're here to learn and listen <laughs> so i guess i'll get started we're we're a small but mighty group um, <laughs> And um, I'm here, I'm, I'm Jamie Asaya Fitzgerald, and I direct uh, Poets and Writers Readings and Workshops West program. So I oversee grant making for California, Seattle, Houston, and Tucson. And um, I'm here today with my colleague, Ricardo Hernandez, who Hi. is... Uh, <laughs> who is in New York City and uh, Ricardo is the program coordinator for the readings and workshops program, both the East uh, regions and the West regions. So um, we are a very uh, bi-coastal group here. And I'm, I'm in Los Angeles actually, so I'm based in California. But welcome, um, I'm excited to get to talk to you today. Um, you probably are pretty familiar with Poets and Writers as an organization, um, but I will just reiterate if you uh, don't already know that uh, we are the largest uh, nonprofit organization serving creative writers. And our mission is to foster the professional development of poets and writers to help promote communication throughout the literary community and to make literature available to the widest possible public. And one of the big ways that we do this is through the Readings and Workshops Mini Grants Program. And we started as an organization with this program in New York City in 1970. So we are celebrating our 50th year. Yay, poets and writers, 50 years of funding literary events. And then we were able to expand the program to the state of California, starting in around 1989, 1990. Um, so we've been funding events in California for over 30 years. And then in 2006, we began to expand the program to select cities throughout the country. And in 2008, Tucson was one of the cities that we brought into the program. And so we've been funding events in Tucson for 12 years now. And um, it's been really wonderful um, to be able to meet with folks in the Tucson literary community. And this meeting is long overdue. I um, you know, haven't had a chance to actually travel to Tucson for a number of years. So I'm really happy to be here with you via Zoom um, now that we have all become a little bit more familiar with this medium, it seems like the logical thing to do and uh, a way to get to uh, connect with you in Tucson. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, so I am going to just go over, I'm gonna introduce the readings and workshops program in a little bit more detail. And then I'm going to talk about um, our new guidelines for virtual events. And then Ricardo is going to give you a sneak peek at what the online application looks like. So you can see how um, pretty easy it is to fill out an application. A lot of folks, when they hear um, mention, you know, grant application, it's a little intimidating or you think you might have to really fill out a lot of paperwork, but um, our application is really pretty easy to fill out. So we just want to 
totally demystify that for you in this meeting. Um, so with that, and then, I'm sorry, and then after that, I really would like, I'm looking forward to hearing from you about any projects you have in the works um, and anything you'd like to check in about, you know, regarding responses to the pandemic, responses to Black Lives Matter, issues that are, that are facing us today and how um, your organizations have responded to those things or if you have a, as a writer have responded to those things. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you. So without further ado, I will just talk a little bit about the Readings and Workshops program. So the program funds writers who do live public readings or teach creative writing workshops in the community. And the grants are mini grants. So they're, they're quite small, $50 to $350 for a reading and $50 to $500 for a writing workshop or writing workshop series. Um, the way our program works is that a sponsoring organization has to apply on behalf of a writer. So a writer can't apply for themselves. However, we do encourage writers who are very active um, doing events and workshops to initiate the application process with organizations. So writers can certainly um, bring the information about our program to the venue or the organization and say, you know, would you consider applying for this funding on my behalf? Um, and since um, the pandemic and since we've all begun uh, our seven months now of, of this experience, um, we quickly decided to begin funding virtual live events um, because that was really the only thing we could could fund going forward. And um, it was easy to make that decision um, because our goal is to support writers and um, that was a way that we could keep giving money to writers, especially during this time of, of uncertainty and um, for a lot of folks, financial uncertainty. So even though our grants are really small, um, it's something that we can do um, to offer support. So I'm going to share with you um, using the screen little slideshow that I put together that has our guidelines for virtual events. If you give me a second, we'll get that going. Here we are. So if you're already Familiar with the readings and workshops grant program guidelines, that's great. Almost everything is the same as it was before. Um, I will go through the things that are a little bit different. Okay, so this is just my introduction, which I already gave. <laughs> So we are funding both virtual writing workshops and virtual readings. Uh, both of these types of events still need to be held in a live manner. So um, whether that's via Zoom, where you're inviting people into the Zoom room like this, or you're live streaming to Facebook or to Instagram or whatever platform you're using, um, it needs to be happening in real time. Um, so that is the main thing for virtual reading. So we wouldn't, for example, fund a pre-recorded podcast that is then shared after the fact or a radio broadcast. And the same thing goes for writing workshops. Um, they must be held in real time with live online instruction of workshop attendees. These workshops um, can be held using an audio video medium. Some folks are even doing workshops over the phone using conferencing, and that is okay. We, we would fund something like that as well. Um, so I will move on to the third point. 
Our grant application is designed for live events. So when you're asked what the event site is, we ask that you just include the organization's mailing address in, that, in those fields. And then you can also just write virtual or Zoom or whatever your platform is. Um, but by putting in your mailing address, we know where the event is sort of seated or where it originates from. And that is helpful to us. Um, while we will consider virtual events that charge a fee or ticketing, um, we do prioritize applications for events that are free or low cost. We also prioritize applications for events that reach underserved communities. Um, I realize now that because most events are virtual, they're much more open uh, to people nationally and internationally. Um, so special populations might not be the focus, um, but I did want to mention that those would be a priority for us. Um, if you've received our grants in the past, you know that normally we would mail the writer's grant check to the organizational project director, but because of sheltering in place, we wanted to um, not involve somebody having to pass on the check a second, a second time. So we are mailing checks directly to the writer after the event has taken place, usually two to three weeks after the event. Reporting is the same as it's been. You will be asked to submit a sponsor's report or a writer's report, depending on your role in the grant. And those reports are very brief online forms um, that, that you fill out and submit to us. And we use those reports to learn about the event and also um, when we have to do our own reporting about our grant program, it really helps us to um, have that information. Um, as always, we ask that you use the credit lines and logos for your publicity, and those are all available on our website on pw.org slash funding. For the time being, we will not require sponsoring organizations to match our portion of a writer's fee. Actually, this, this guideline is really meant for California where we do strongly encourage a match from the organization, but we've never really had that rule for Tucson. So it's a moot point. We don't require a match. You can just apply um, for, for the funding with that one. And um, as usual, even though we're funding virtual events, we still require that the sponsoring organization is based in Tucson. Um, this is one of the big changes. Uh, we used to ask organizations to submit applications at least eight weeks in advance of the event date. But in order to be more responsive to virtual events being organized sort of on the fly. Um, we've shortened that deadline to four weeks in advance of the event date. So you have a little bit more time to get your applications in. And last but not least, if you are doing literary events, we encourage you to post them on our literary events calendar, which is on pw.org slash calendar. Um, it's free to post your events, and it's a great way to get a little bit of national exposure for, for your events. And I'm going to stop the screen share now and um, let Ricardo take over with the um, overview of the application. Thanks, Jamie. Um, thank you all again just for joining us tonight, or, or for me it's tonight. I guess for you it would be afternoon. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, as Jamie mentioned, I'm just going to show um, an overview of the application field and also um, just focus on some of the points for these uh, that Jamie just made about virtual events. So we did, um, again, the application is made for live events. And so we, we had to make just a few adjustments with notes that would sort of help folks out while they're filling it out um, for details that they need to um, give us 
about their virtual event. So let me turn on my screen share. Can you all see that? Okay. So I'm just going to start off at pw.org, which is, of course, our uh, main page. So to go to the application guidelines, um, we will go to readings and workshops. So if you float your cursor over, there's a drop down menu. And then you can go to apply for funding. So um, this is actually where our guidelines are housed. And you'll actually see if you scroll down a little bit, um, we have also included the special amendments we've made to the guidelines. So just special coronavirus funding. Um, and some of what Jamie described, I think actually most of it is here as well um, for reference. So that's always helpful, uh, we think. So you scroll down our, you know, our old guidelines, the amended ones. And then at the very bottom, I believe is, oh, no, <laughs> sorry. Uh, right here, the apply, <laughs> the apply button's at the top. Um, so if you click here, it'll actually take you to our main uh, grants management page login. Um, so if you are, you've been previously funded uh, through RW, um, you will probably have uh, an account with us. Um, so your email and password would go here. If you are new to RW, you would go to this uh, option on the right hand side just to register your organization. Um, and I'll just show you what it looks like. Um, it's a very simple sort of questionnaire. Um, but once you register um, and complete all the fields with the red asterisk um, about your organization and also you as the project director, you would submit it and then you would receive info on how to log into the page I was just at. Um, so in this instance, I'm going to be a, a test sponsor. So I believe this is the account. And so it'll take us to our account dashboard. So from here, um, there's just helpful contact info on how to reach us. Um, we are working remotely. So your best bet might be to just email um, the RWS or our RW West email um, for any questions, or you can always reach out to Jamie or myself. Um, and then below that is uh, are the options on how to complete an application. So let's say in this instance, I just registered my, my library and we're going to host a author who is going to be doing a poetry reading through Zoom. So I would go to create a new application. Um, if you filled this out before, it's, it's similar. It's the same process. Um, there's always this trick where you have to save your draft. <laughs> and Cynthia's nodding, yes. <laughs> yeah, to save your draft. Um, after you've saved your draft, you can sort of begin to fill it out. Um, so again, you go, you work left to right. Um, so you would begin with just your profile. And this is, again, you're reviewing uh, your information to make sure it's accurate, your contact info, so you click here, you save your draft, um, and then you can move on to the next page, um, the next tab rather. So as Jamie mentioned, it's a pretty straightforward uh, grant application. Um, it's a lot of checks and fill-in fields. So my example was a poetry reading. So I would select that in the category, um, the number of reading sessions, so just one, I'm not having this person do a virtual workshop session, so on and so forth. Um, there is a special field here that just is for New York applicants, so you can skip that part. Um, and here is where uh, the event description would go. So you would title your event, um, you know, virtual poetry reading featuring poet, let's say. Um, and then below that, your event description. Um, here is where, you know, in the past we've asked folks just to describe uh, what they would like to do for their event and how the writer would be participating. Um, in this instance, what we're asking is in addition to that, just to let us know um, how, what platform you'll be using and how the event will be hosted virtually. Um, and again, this is just a reminder for any folks that, you know, we are only considering virtual events at this time. Um, and it also helps us know, uh, learn a little bit about how folks are hosting events. So we just included Zoom and Hangouts. 
Um, but as Jamie's mentioned, you know, sometimes there have been workshops that have been through the phone, uh, through conference lines. And so if your event is gonna take on an extra platform or something, it's good to just describe it to us here. Um, and then open to the public, uh, yes and no. Uh, this one is an interesting question, but I believe there's, um, it's fine to have it be close to the public if it's a special workshop. Um, and again, that just might be something to describe in the event if there's a reason for that. Um, so you would save your draft um, and then you go to the next tab in site. So this is again, what Jamie had mentioned earlier. Um, right now, we will just ask folks to enter their mailing addresses, right? The organization's mailing address as a location of where the event is taking place. Um, so let's say, I mean, I, I have a hard, 100 Poetry Lane. As you can tell, I'm a poet. And so I, I tip my hand towards the poetry. Um, you fill it out as normal, but just your mailing address. Here is where, again, you could just enter, let's say online, um, and then Poetry Library. That's how some folks have taken to letting us know, again, um, that the event is virtual and how they're hosting it. Um, so you would enter that. You would save your draft. Um, you move on to your next field. Uh, this is the date section. The date section, um, it's a little tricky, but I'm gonna try to navigate it because I think it might be helpful. Um, so let's say you filled out your draft, you've hit okay, because um, you have done that. Um, here's where you would again, this would actually autofill um, whatever you entered in the event title um, and the first event tab will be here, as will the event site. So it'll be your mailing information. Um, what you would need to do is go to your session date field and just let us know when um, that event would be happening. Um, you can use these uh, left and right arrows to go further into the year, um, as well as the time. This one's a drag, or you can click. Um, the minutes, it, you, there are folks who indicate if it's going to be, let's say, 1.30 versus 1. Um, that's always helpful for us to know. Um, and it's always, I think, good uh, just keeping tabs of the event. So you would save. Oh, wait. Oh, no. I think I may have gone into a little corner here. Um, because it's a live application um, and I'm not entering things, it's not letting me save. So again, um, a red asterisk, um, make sure you save it. But once you've done that, what will happen is um, you can, it'll record the session. You'll have to hit home. So it's up here on the top right. And you'll have to go into your draft again. Um, so let's say this is the one that we were working on today. So we would just open the application. We'd go back to dates. Um, you would see your information filled out here. Obviously, we didn't do it this time, and so that's why we see the blank. Um, but if you were to add, let's say, another session, maybe this person will be doing a workshop series, and so there'll be more than one meeting. Here is where you would enter that information. Um, once you've done that, you hit Save Draft, and then the Writer tab. So the Writer tab is, um, again, pretty straightforward. It requires... Um, basic contact information, uh, the writer's first name, last name. Um, as Jamie also mentioned about how we're mailing checks at this point, um, you know, grant checks are being mailed directly to writers. So the best way of making sure they get their checks would be to give us um, their best mailing address. Um, we are checking and contacting writers um, that we've awarded grants just to verify that uh, these addresses because we know you know, folks will shelter in place in different locations. And so just making sure that's accurate, but it does help us a lot if it's sort of, you know, entered and verified the first time around. Um, and as before, um, anything with a red asterisk is required um, and including just a short bio um, that includes publications, uh, magazines, anthologies, or books, or featured performances or readings if the writer is a little more performance-based. Um, and the social security number, of course. Um, but once you've got all that collected, 
um, you would save your draft at the bottom of the page and then head to the final tab, which would be request. So here is again where you would just let us know how much, uh, how large of a grant you would be requesting. Um, as Jamie mentioned, for readings, it's anywhere between fifty to three hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, for writing workshops, it's uh, between fifty to five hundred for a workshop or workshop series. Um, this is for the request, and then below that, it would be the amount the sponsor will provide. Um, this is again more for the California uh, requirement about matching fees. Um, so if let's say you were to be hosting an event, you can uh, provide an honorarium separately for the writer. Um, you can let us know that here. Um, it's not required. And sometimes if that's the case, you would just enter a zero. Um, once you save your draft, this will update and below it will sort of give you a, a round of like, I'm oh, sorry, not a round, a, a sum of what the request will be. Um, so Again, you work left to right, you can always save your draft, <laughs> uh, save your progress if you don't have all the information available right away. Um, you can always refer back to these tabs. Um, and once you've done that, you would submit to PW, um, you would receive, I believe, an email notification and the application will, will get a notification as well. Um, you do need to go to that final authorized tab, though, to sign, to digitally sign and date the application. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Um, so yes, uh, you would sign digitally in the authorize and then submit. The good thing, though, is that um, the application will also remind you about this last authorization because I forgot myself. So you'll just get a message that says you need to sign. Uh, and this is where that would be. Um, but I believe. Um, I think that's all the parts of the application. Um, I mentioned just, you know, those little notes, you'll see them as well when you're filling out um, just the considerations for virtual events, but most, oops, apologies. But um, again, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and it's again, also in the guidelines, but we're happy to answer questions if you need a little more assistance while you're filling out the applications. Um, I know sometimes that's helpful, especially for folks who are doing it for the first time. Um, but I believe that's it for me. Thank you so much, Ricardo. That was great. I think um, that helps to demystify things for anyone who feels like they might uh, be worried about filling out the application. So right now we can open things up. If you have any questions, feel free. We're such a small group. You could just unmute and we can have a conversation. I just and, want I just want to say I'm with the Paw Group in Tucson, and we do we've been working with y'all for quite a while, and I mean every time you fill out so it reminds you it reminds you you didn't sign this you didn't fill this out and then it takes right back there you can't screw it up. Oh, really. that's so good. Yeah. That's actually better than a paper no, application really, in case you no, forget no, no. It's it's really right. it's really helpful. This is right. such a good application. I wish everybody used it. The other yeah. thing is when you ask for social security numbers from your writers, everybody's nervous about putting that on paper. So ha just have them call you yeah. or have them write out the word one, two, you know, T-W-O-T-H-R-E. Mm -hmm. And then it's fine, you know, so it's not out in the ether somewhere. Everybody's nervous about that one part. But yeah, that's true, Cynthia. Um, and they can always call us directly too if they you know just want to give it directly to us that's fine I didn't have call me and then i eat yeah it you know it just appear <laughs> it yeah yeah but it, but really you've been so helpful in making this kind of application and uh that's nice to great. hear <laughs> yeah it's just great to keep it going we we converted to zoom you know um to, right away to try to you know learn all this stuff that we didn't already know about how to do uh, do readings this way and it's nice to not have to set up chairs i have to say but um <laughs> and we had great attendance because now you can get people all across the country you know we just mm -hmm. time ours a little bit earlier so new york doesn't feel like they're robbing themselves of sleep and it's, <laughs> it's been great it's been great so thank you thank you very much thank you for all you know all of the 
awesome events that you've been organizing in, oh. um, in Tucson. I don't know if you saw the Charles Bernstein May May one. It's up on our POG YouTube now. Oh, you don't want to miss it. It's so good. May May Bersenbrugge and Charles yes. Bernstein poetry reading. It's bad. I love her. Yeah. She's reading from that book, Treatise on Stars, which is up for some book award right now. And it's so mm. Yeah. It's so I mean, you know, I'm biased, but it's so fabulous. <laughs> yeah. So do you have any questions about the grant program or what qualifies for funding or anything like that? Is there anything I can help with? Yes. Mike. I have a couple of questions. Okay. So, so I understand that the sponsoring organization needs to be in Tucson, but do the writers who might be doing a reading or a workshop, do they need to be in Tucson? No, the writers can be from anywhere. Okay. And yeah. secondly, does the sponsoring organization need to be a nonprofit? It does not have to be a nonprofit. We're very uh, loose about what constitutes an organization. So we'll have a reading series apply just under the name of the reading series. Um, as long as there is some kind of named entity and a specific person who is acting as the project director, um, you can apply mm -hmm. for funding. You may be familiar with the Tucson Festival of Books. Um, yes, yes. I've heard of it. I haven't been. But. One of the uh, largest um, book festivals in the country. Um, we had to cancel it this year um, because everybody was dropping off. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And of course, that was smart, but and we've already determined to do um, a virtual festival next March. Um, is the book festival something that might be a sponsoring organization? We're holding a series of um, virtual readings and interviews with authors and so on right now. Yes, the book the book festival could apply for funding as as an organization. Okay, well, I think those answer my questions. Thank you. <laughs> I, I just make um, just an extra tip. Um, so you probably have to register the book festival and there is a group, there's like a category of um, just organization types and I am seeing that poetry festival is one of them. That might be the one just to select and then that'll also let us know. Okay, okay. I want to say I recently did a couple of workshops with the with the grant um, through Owl and Panther Foundation um, and through Zoom, and I thought it was a great success. So thank you. You're welcome. Um, one of the things that I should mention, since Heather is from a library, um, we do have uh, in our guidelines that we fund events that are for teens to adults. So we don't fund events uh, for really little children. Uh, we wouldn't fund a uh, children's lit writer. So keep that in mind, because I know libraries do a lot of events for young children, but we will, you know, we will consider applications for young adult, teen and up and those genres. So. That's yeah. good to know. Um, what are, <laughs> we, we, you know, we're thinking this would be a, a cool opportunity to kind of extend our uh, two annual writers in residence to give other writers in town, you know, in Pima County, essentially more exposure, more, a little bit of income, you know, um, mm -hmm. help serve patrons and stuff. So what about um, a children's literature writer like Jennifer J. Stewart, who was our recent um, writer in residence, who's, who's giving writing workshops for grownups, teens and grownups who want to write children's books. Would that be something or was, is it more of the performative aspect of her writing that would, or the writer's writing that would be featured? Well, if it's a writing workshop that's focused on children's lit, we wouldn't fund that. Okay. It would have to be a more general okay. writing workshop. So for instance, I'll just give as an example, one of the writers who we funded for a really long time who goes to California libraries, she teaches an all ages kind of poetry writing experience mm -hmm. workshop and even though it's primarily for adults, a lot of times little kids will come with their parents, that kind of thing. And that's okay. 
you know, but the spirit of the event has to be geared more toward teens to adults and the writer presenting has to be that type of writer. Perfect. I have no objection. <laughs> <laughs> Now I put my uh, I put two emails in the chats uh, just because you know there's not as many people who are typically at these meetings right but so just to get it out there that the library is really wanting to support the writing community and any questions about how how the Pima County Public Library can support writers during this time um, and going forward literary arts at pima.gov or my my personal emails in there uh, we have sort of a a strange process of, of a application for virtual programs, but and so sometimes it takes a while to get things going. But um, this is just definitely something we want to explore, and um, we just want writers to know that we're there for you. You know, so that's great. That's really great to know and good information. Um, and also, I I wanted to say too that I think a lot of folks uh, have forgotten about the grant program or. Uh, just don't know about it. So if you could help spread the word to other presenters and writers, uh, we would really appreciate it, uh, especially since COVID um, started, uh, the applications from Tucson have, have gone down considerably. And so I also wanted to ask you um, if there are events happening um, that are, you know, that you see going on in, in Tucson that are emanating from, from your, your city, from your community that I should be aware of. <laughs> and we can add those to the, uh, the calendar at, at will, right? I mean, as I recall, when I was yes. doing this a while ago, it was just anything, we'd, we could put up anything with it. So, you know, for example, the, I, I, I don't know, I haven't looked at it recently, but I'm imagining the Poetry Center is pretty good about entering their Tucson Humanities readings and things like that. Um, you know, I know virtual, uh, maybe, maybe people don't realize that virtual programs are an option. So uh, maybe, you know, maybe it'll pick up again, especially if the library can help, you know, because we've got the the license and we've got the, you know, the people that we're, the de we're developing expertise as we go about really great uh, pro virtual programs. So uh, mm -hmm. perhaps ideally we'll get some more writers doing more work out there. That would be great. That would be great. Yeah. So I don't know if, if um, Marsha, Meg or Cynthia, if you have any thoughts on groups that I should reach out to or individuals or anything like that. Um, I would welcome that information either, you know, you could maybe email it to me later or um, put it in the chat here. I will if I think of anything. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'll tell our uh, Southwest Books of the Year writers, our reviewer board, I'll just remind them about this. I think they know, but it's just, you know, to get it, bring it back top of mind would be good because they know people, right? And they can sp spread the root word. So that yeah. would be, be good. This is a well-timed workshop, actually. I'm so glad you're, you're doing this. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think it'll be good for, to, to help some artists out there get their yeah. work. Yeah. I know, I know TC Tolbert does a lot for um, poetry and he recently got a grant in the last year to do a lot more for poets and I don't know if he's tuned into poets and writers but I'll I'll shoot him an email and also Teray Fowler Chapman who used to do poetry under the trees or in the park or on the street um, I know she's been teaching at a high school but um, she's very community minded and and let me just reach out to them and let them know that you're you know, ready, ready, you're ready. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> them. And, we are ready, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because there are so many poets in this town. I know that these three groups can't do it all. I know that. Yeah, hi, Meg. Yeah, we can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've been in touch with TC. He's been very helpful, actually, oh, and sharing oh. um, people that, you know, for me to reach out to, which I did um, mm -hmm. about... I think shortly before the lockdown really set in. So yeah, the timing was a little, ooh, but. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so Bowden, Lisa Bowden over at Corey Press, I know they yes. were with you before. They apply. I don't know what they're up to or, you know, how that's working. Yeah. You know, we're just in our bubbles here. So it's, it's hard. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there a place that you go to to learn about your literary literary events locally, or do you just kind of hear about it through Facebook? Um, Facebook. <laughs> Facebook. Um, yeah. yeah, pretty much. Pretty okay. much. Yeah. Well, there's a good um, listserv, uh, Yahoo listserv, um, Literary Arts Network, Lit Arts Net. And Lit Arts Net. Okay, that's good to know. Post a lot of information about readings and workshops and activities, and so that's a that's a good resource. It's not a resource exactly, but it's a contact. Okay, and is that Tucson based or is it? It is everywhere. But it, Covers southern uh, southern Arizona, but yes, it's Tucson. Southern okay, yeah. that's good to know about. I'm happy to. That's important info. Thank you. I'll I'll look I'll look for that one. Um. Well, um, do you want to share? Do any of you have any events or projects in the works that you like to share with each other, or um, anything like that? Since we're here. Well, I'm teaching a writing workshop, a six week workshop called Writing Through the Pandemic. <laughs> Raking through? Yeah. Writing through. Writing, writing through. Writing through the pandemic. Yeah. That's, that's great. Through, that's through a local organization, The Learning Curve. Oh, yeah. yeah. Susan Dick. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm having a, a lot of fun if you can talk about writing about the pandemic as fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to make the best of it, right? <laughs> One way to do it is to, to be writing. You know, um, my husband, Charles Alexander, is doing also a class with Susan at the Learning Curve. That's Susan right. is the director there um, on uh, Black women writers. And uh, he, there'll be some interviews. He actually has some footage from different contemporary Black women writers. So. You know, I mean, he's a white guy talking about black writing, but you know, he's probably the best person to be doing it. He loves us writing. So um, that's gonna be starting up in about a week. So that's pretty exciting. Well, is, Charles is a wonderful is That Jack. Charles Alexander of Chax? Yes. Press? Yes. Oh, I didn't know you were, you were married. Yeah, I'm, I'm married to it. <laughs> <laughs> involved yeah <laughs> yeah and I and I thought that you had moved away did you move away yeah, and then come we back did. we um, lived in Texas for about four years working at a little university there and uh, came back about two years ago oh, so okay we're getting up steam again yeah yeah and, uh, well we it's gr great yeah. to know that you're back in in Tucson yeah we're very much back yeah <laughs> Mm -hmm. Tucson is glad too. Yeah, we're glad you're here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And I know Chax is, um, was just going to do a reading with uh, Hank Lazar and Joseph Lees out of California, you know, a virtual reading, but Hank is not feeling really great. So that was supposed to happen, I think, last night and they canceled. So Chax may be applying for some of these little mini grants as well to help. That would be great. We would love to get applications from Chax mm -hmm. again. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we have, other... a, we have a reading in November. Uh, Janice Lee um, is reading with a local uh, Will Stanier on November 14th, I believe. And uh, that should be fun. That should be a good reading. It'll be a Zoom reading. And I think I already applied. <laughs> yeah, I think we're looking at those applications this week, actually. <laughs> yeah, Saturday, the 14th of November. I can't believe it's November already. It's still 96 degrees here. I don't know what it's like where you are, but it's like summer, summer now. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. It's yeah. Crazy. But, and then we'll regroup for the fall. We had hoped we'd be able to do in person readings after January, but doesn't look that way. It doesn't look that way. So yeah. we'll be doing more virtual. But everybody's getting better at it, more comfortable with it. So so be it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, all of you, for, for joining us today. Um, we, we are recording this, and we will share it on our YouTube channel. I hope you're all OK with that. Um, you can email me um, about that if, if there are any issues. But 
this is a resource, um, especially with the um, application uh, overview that Ricardo gave. So we'll definitely be sharing this. And um, I hope that you will all um, feel free to contact us if you have any questions about applying and uh, don't hesitate to apply if, if you're gonna be uh, offering a reading or a writing workshop. Okay, thank, thank you so much for sharing this. Um, and, and from the library, I just, in the chat, I put a link to the nomination form for our Writers in Residence program. Um, so two, two times a year, we have uh, Writers in Residence um, and we pay them and, they, uh, and we're helping, we give a lot of support for virtual. And so perhaps there's some way to, you know, combine all this. I mean, I, I think our interest again for the, this grant was to get more writers than just those two. So thank you. This mm -hmm. is it's fun to be here as a as a library resource instead of just a hungry writer. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Heather, and, and all of you for joining us. And take care and, and be well. Okay, thank bye. you.